Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 24th of November, 2019. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the pastor at the church, and I'd like to take the next about 10 minutes and just share with you some of the highlights of this morning's message. It's Thanksgiving time, and uh, you know, as I sought the Lord for a message, you know, really what came forth was a message about Thanksgiving and about what does the word say about all that. Okay, so you know, and I started thinking, what exactly does it mean to be thankful? You know, we use the words "thank you" and uh, "I'm thankful," or you know, but what do we mean by that? And uh, you know, one of the things that came to mind is that we're thankful when we receive something that was unexpected or unearned. All right, I, I mean, I think we're thankful also at times when people give us things that we, you know knew were coming, but, but we're particularly thankful. Thankfulness tends to rise when people go over and above. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, they didn't have to do that. And so that's where I think true thankfulness starts to, to come up. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I, there's a scripture we're going to begin with. It's over in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And it asks the question, what do you have that you did not receive? You know, because really everything that we have, including our, our very being, is something we receive from God. All right, he gave us all things. He gave us the, the, the breath that we breathe. He gave us the universe that we live in. And so everything that we have, is, our, our, we depend on things that we cannot produce ourselves. And so this idea of, you know, needing to be grateful because at all times we're always receiving things that are really, truly undeserved and unearned, okay? First uh, Thessalonians 5.18 says this, And everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Very simple statement, okay? Uh, something we need to take to heart. Acknowledging how happy I am that you gave or did something that you didn't have to do, Okay? And uh, noticing, just taking time to notice it, okay? We, we begin with a life of thanksgiving by following Jesus, our Lord, and our example, all right? First John uh, 22, 6 says this, uh, The one who says he abides in him, meaning Jesus, ought himself to walk in the same manner as he, meaning Jesus, walk. We should live like Jesus did. We should, you know, behave ourselves like Jesus. Colossians three fifteen through 17 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. And it's going to say this three times in the scripture. Let the word of Christ... Uh, richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, so that covers everything, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. All right, and so, you know, this uh, following the example of Jesus. Jesus gave thanks before he fed the 5,000. You know, that, that miracle. And then uh, I just noticed something in the scriptures that when the people referred to the place where he performed that miracle, they took notice of something. In John six twenty three, it talks about boats coming from that place. It says, there came other small boats from Tiberias near to the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Isn't that interesting that they, they took note of the fact that when he broke, gave thanks and broke that bread and gave it to him, that's, that's when the miracle occurred. Our, our thankfulness is a testimony that we believe the gospel. I mean, if you actually believe that Jesus uh, dying on that cross for your sins caused all your sins, you, you're a hopeless sinner. I was a hopeless sinner. Uh, the, the, you know, and, and Jesus died for my sins, and by grace through faith, I can receive forgiveness of all my sins, uh, a new life today, and an eternal life to follow. I mean, I should be the most grateful person. I should be the most thankful person uh, walking the planet. And I believe that's part of our testimony, people, is that we are grateful. We're, we're thankful people. All right. Um, as we approach God, we approach him with thanksgiving and praise. Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. Uh, it says it's a psalm for thanksgiving. It starts off by telling us to shout joyfully to the Lord, to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. And then down in verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. All right, we're going to keep moving because just to, to get this all into 10 minutes, you know, sort of a, a you know, I got to kind of trim a little bit here and there. Philippians 4 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, it says, Be anxious for nothing. And I, I bring this out in a lot of messages. Why did God say, Be anxious for nothing? Because we're anxious about everything. All right, why does He say, Fear not? Because we're fearful. Don't feel bad about yourself if you're if you're experiencing anxiety or, or fear or those kind of things. God desires to free you from those things, and that's what he says. Don't do that here. Let me give you an alternative to that. Everything, you know, pray, and then supplication is just like really, you know, praying. I, I said uh, to the congregation, you know, that get down on the, and, and suck some carpet, you know, get on your face before God prayer, okay, and then mix that with thanksgiving and let your request be made known to God. All right, but we're instructors, we approach God to approach him with thankfulness. And thankfulness uh, to God causes us not to stink, 
All right. I had a friend, and if people were, were just being bad, he'd say, "You stink." All right. <laughs> so you know, and I never forgot that 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 little phrase from him. But listen to this in Second Corinthians two fourteen through fifteen. But thanks be to God, source of our thankfulness here, who always leads us to, uh, in triumph in Christ and manifests through us a sweet aroma of the knowledge of Him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ. Uh, to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. And so, you know, don't stink, all right? Uh, really endeavor to be people who, who manifest that, that, that fragrance from God that, that draw people's hearts to him. And so now let's move on. You know, most people have been talking about thankfulness to God, but let's talk about thankfulness to and for one another. All right, First Thessalonians 1, 2, we give thanks to God always for you all. So here we're thanking God for those people, all right? Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1, for all, first of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers and petitions and thanksgivings, plural, be made on behalf of all men. All right, it says you should be thankful for the leaders, and it goes on to talk about just, you know, for all men, that we should be thankful. Romans 16, 3 through 4, greet Priscilla and Aquila, uh, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who for my life risked their own necks, to whom not only do I give thanks, all right, but also all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them for, for, for you know, saving Paul's life. All right, We can become desensitized, though, to our need for thankfulness through some things. And I'm just going to give my short list here. All right, Bad habits. Maybe you just never learn to express thankfulness. All right, When I was a little kid, I remember I had an aunt who, who worked at a, a big company that did international business. And she would take, I was a stamp collector, so she would take the stamps off those envelopes and just put them in an envelope and send them to me about every three months. And my mother always insisted, you know, you need to write her a thank you letter and thank her for doing that. That's very special that she does that. And, you know, I, I might have overlooked it, but I was taught. I was taught the good habit of, of expressing thankfulness to people. Uh, here's another. Now, this, of course, is not for my audience here because none of you struggle with this. But pride and self-centeredness, you know, can really undermine your, your ability to be thankful. Because if I think I deserve more than I get, I'm not going to be thankful for what I get. All right. Uh, I might not even notice, you know, the blessings that people are sending my way because I think, well, I deserve more than what they're giving me. All right. So watch out for pride. Watch out for self-centeredness. Okay. And I, uh, bitterness and unforgiveness. Ooh, you know, are you keeping lists, you know, of the misdeeds of others? All right. Um, all good things uh, seem to be like a do small down payment on what's owed to me if I'm entertaining bitterness in my heart. And I have to be careful of that, okay? Because ruminating on the misdeeds of others undermines, you know, something that God wants me to do, which is to be thankful. All right, what about anger in all of its various forms? Uh, we're going to look at one scripture about that. And it just after being instructed to put away anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech out of our mouths, we're told in Colossians 3.15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. All right, so thankfulness is, is sort of this, you know, pushing back away from, you know, those forms of anger and taking on uh, the, the new person that we're supposed to be in Christ. And so... Uh, you know, one more that I want to talk about here, okay, which is being overwhelmed by grief can make us numb to blessings, all right? And, hey, grief is a part of all of our lives. We, you know, we all experience our griefs. But there's times when those griefs, if you, if you aren't progressing in relinquishing them to God, uh, you know, they can become something that makes it very hard for you to appreciate uh, the good things, you know, that, that are coming your way. Uh, I think about Naomi, and this is not a criticism of Naomi. Naomi is a, a hero in scripture, but uh, she lost her husband, both of her sons, you know, and ended up coming back with one daughter-in-law who was a pagan, uh, from a pagan land. And um, I think it was hard for her because of all that to really recognize the blessings, you know. Boaz blesses Ruth, and she's, oh, blessed be that man of the Lord for what he's done. You know, she doesn't understand. No, blessed be us. We're blessed because of what he's done. All right, and so eventually it comes down to the end of the story, and they bring this child that uh, Ruth and Boaz have together to uh, Naomi, and they say, look, look at this, 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 this daughter-in-law of yours. She's become better to you than seven sons. And they, they give her the child, and it says, and she received the child into her lap and became its nurse. And I think at that point she started to realize, wow, you know, the blessings that I'm receiving because she had been so overwhelmed that I think she'd become numb uh, to the blessing that God was bringing in her life. And so she was missing out. All right. So purpose to be thankful. All right. That's how to overcome all this purpose to be thankful. Develop the attitude of gratitude. Uh, thank God. Thank people. Work at, at noticing small things or sm noticing things that nobody else is noticing and, and, and thank, thank people. Thank God. You know, uh, pour out from the abundance of your heart. All right. There's scriptures, you know, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 50 says, uh, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph in Christ 
And then finally, this one scripture, and with this we'll close. Uh, it's the one we started with, First Thessalonians 5, uh, 16 through 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.